Alright, if you're coming from my last video, I've got even more interesting Breath of the Wild tidbits that you probably don't know about. We'll still have some of the basic bread and butter tips, but we're also going to go more into the deep end this time. So prepare for some more glitches and game development stuff. If you enjoy content like this, give this video a like. I specialize in Breath of the Wild, and we'll be on top of the newest Zelda stuff pronto. Alright, let's get it going. Certain sides of these common trees have roots that can be backflipped off of to gain bullet time quickly. Just hold ZL down, hop forward, then backflip. This can be a nifty way to gain the upper hand during a fight. The most common way to conduct shock arrows while out and about is to stasis a choo-choo jelly, then shoot it. But you can instead use a freshly killed frog or lizard, freeze them, then shock them. This will also conduct shock arrows. Also, if you remember bomb chews from past Zelda games, you can even send in the animal towards an enemy encampment and perform this as a makeshift electric bomb chew. Pretty nifty. Tall trees with a pointed top can let you rest up there to get your stamina back, but it also lets you survey the area with your scope and use the camera rune, including selfie mode. No other rune works. Unless you count wind bombs, I guess? When a twilight or light arrow is fired, the arrow usually disappears upon striking an object. But certain rock hard objects cause it to ricochet off, and you can actually see the arrow bounce around. Ores are giant flints, so strike an ore with a piece of wood to make a campfire and take an even closer look. It's also possible for elemental arrows to ricochet to the ground. By firing at a fairy, elemental arrows bounce off in different directions. Shock arrows can drop straight down and shock opponents, but the best use is fire arrows in a grassy area, as the updrafts they create affect them in real time and cause a chaotic firestorm of ricocheting arrows. If you happen to pick up a stall skull while disguised, you can use the R button to kick attack and damage enemies freely. Since the skull is technically a third party and not your attack, you can use it to bully enemies to death. Try doing the same trick on a Lizalfos though, and they'll just casually sidestep your kick. Cheeky buggers. There's one apple tree with a beehive on it in the Lost Woods that's technically impossible to get to. We think maybe a dev put it there and forgot about it, but we'll never know. Small curbs such as the edge of towers or the guardrails of Sokala Bridge rapidly accelerate Link when sliding against it with a slick shield. Tony Hawk would be proud of your grinding skills. Head to Link's house, then either burn or spin attack his flowers specifically on his lawn. They act really weird. An old trick is to swing a flame or shock weapon, then drop them mid-swing to give them elemental properties on the ground, called elemental ignition. But an ingenious use of this is to carefully lay a trap on top of a metallic weapon and sandwich it between a juicy piece of meat. It actually becomes a real working mousetrap. Did you know that the Colosseum Lionel actually holds a torch that has a flame blade skin over it? There's actually a couple ways to show this, but the easiest way is to fire a fire arrow at the flame blade just before the Lionel disappears. Then, pick up the weapon while empty-handed to carry the live torch. This is called a torchized flame blade. But the best usage is to magnesis it and burn enemies from a safe distance. If you pay close attention, food that gets frozen gets heavily increased sliding properties. Try not to freeze your meal on a hillside or else your lunch might slide away. Although it can be pretty fun to watch where they might end up. Here's a photo from Nintendo's hiring website that displayed items used for fully work during Breath of the Wild's development. This is my personal guess to which sounds were which. Here's also a short video that they posted which showcased footstep and equipment audio while walking. Elemental key swings have small designs on their wings matching to their element, such as glacier-like designs for ice keys, flames for fire keys, and lightning strikes for electric keys. By using the scope while on the master cycle, then quickly placing a marker and exiting the scope, you will pivot the bike and forcibly break things. You can break rocks, push objects, and even knock down certain doors by pivoting the bike. Whoa. 
Oh, and break the bike itself. There may be some small enemy animations you may not have seen before in special situations, such as Guardian Scouts breaking Cryonis blocks, Lionels blowing away bombs when they notice them, and a slightly different one when they're surprised by them, and Wizrobes summoning Choo Choo's and Keys. Blizzard Rods are not only massively useful against packs of enemies, but they're also one of the best farming tools in the game, especially making cliff farming a breeze, literally. <laughs> Decayed Guardians usually have an ancient part for you to grab, but there are a handful of special ones in Hyrule that carry two for some reason. If you're an extremely dedicated treasure hunter, you may at some point have run into treasure chests on your radar that are nowhere to be found. That's because they were unfortunately misplaced during development to spawn under the map. But through some glitches, you can actually still get to these hard to reach chests underneath the map. Is it worth it for the reward at this point? Not really, but the fact that we can get to these at all in such a weird fashion is a satisfaction that we wanted. Hopefully this will add to your arsenal of even more things you didn't know about Breath of the Wild. We continue to do more Breath of the Wild covers to this day, including expert reacts and breakdown videos. And for everything else, stay tuned right here on GameSpot.